quick intro regarding stains. My assumption is at this point you've been introduced to various types of stains in regard to looking for bacteria, looking for cytological changes in red blood cells and white blood cells. So this is just a super quick recap of some of the stains that we'll be talking about and then an introduction to one that you might not have come across quite yet. So Romanowski type stains are the ones that we use most often on air dried slides in for cytology in particular. Papanicolaou stains are uh, wet slides, so immediately fixed slides. So again, dry stains for cytology we typically use Romanowski type stains and wet mounts, uh, actual wet samples, we can use Papanicolaou. I'll talk about Papanicolaou we don't typically use it in clinic. It's one that might come back to us from a lab that has been stained in Papanicolaou or it's might that it's one that we might send unstained to a lab and then they stain it with Papanicolaou just depending on what they're looking for in particular. So our Romanowski type stains, they're for air dried slides. Typical ones oops, would be right stains, sorry, right stain, gem sustain, diff quick stain. They're really easy, they're readily available. Most clinics have a diff quick. Good nuclear and nucleolar detail. Not the best though, but they're good. And excellent cytoplasmic detail. So really the Romanowski type stains were developed to identify changes in the cytoplasm of these cells. So they are very, very good for identifying cytoplasmic detail. Microorganisms are shown, depending on the type, they'll either show up as dark blue, dark purple, or sometimes they'll show up as an absence of the bacteria. So it's actually the only area on the slide that doesn't stain. And they're really cost effective. So again, most, oh, that's a misspelling. Just note that it's actually diff quick, Q-U-I-K. Common misspelling, thanks to autocorrect. But they're really, they're cost effective, they're quick. They only take about, uh, well, but roughly 15 seconds plus rinsing and drying. So it's not too long to run them in clinic. Papa Nicolau stains are different. They are focused on nucleolar detail. That's their main, that was the goal of the creation of Papa Nicolau stains. So they're for wet mounted stains. They're immediate for immediate fixation. Considerable, it takes a considerable amount of time to stain a slide in the Papa Nicolau format. Often done so through automatic slide stains, uh, stainers. It does offer excellent nuclear and nuclear olar detail. That's the one main characteristic that you, I want you to be aware of. The transparency in the cytoplasm from Papanicolaou staining, it has a really, I mean, you can see right through the cytoplasms in most of the cells. So it's really good for thick samples. So if there's clumping, sheeting, etc., then the cytologist is still able to look at the nucle nucleus and the nucleolar details because a stained cytoplasm isn't really going to get in the way. Microorganisms are not identifiable accurately with a Papanicolaou stain. And just a little bit of history about Papanicolaou stain. It was developed by George Papanicolaou, and he created it for vaginal cytology in particular and identification of cervical cancer, cervical cell changes. Hence, if you think about the name, Papa Nicolau, that is the stain that is also his name, but spelled with a K. And it's also where the term, uh, his name is where the term pap smear comes from. So cervical cell evaluation and vaginal cytology evaluation. So pap smear, Papa Nicolau, uh, staining all comes from George Papa Nicolau, the creator of a Papa Nicolau stain. So looking again for vaginal cytology and cervical changes, most for mostly for humans, but of course animals can also get abnormal changes to these cells. So when we send it out to the lab, most often is the case that they'll stain it with Papa Nicolau staining. This, these are the steps for Papanicolaou staining. <laughs> it's a little bit much. This is why we don't do it in clinic. It's very, very involved. It's a lot of staining and counter staining involved. So again, just be aware that it is quite a long process, 20 steps. There's now a 90 second Papanicolaou stain that's been created, but most often, unless we're specializing in uh, cytology, we don't typically carry these in clinic. Quick comparison, if it's a dry smear, so one that's been air dried, uh, it's great with Romanowski stains. Wet, if 
oh, sorry, uh, wet smear artifacts are common with Ro Romanowski stains. Cytoplasmic detail is really well demonstrated in Romanowski stains. Nuclear detail, it's okay, it's good, um, but you can get different patterns with Romanowski type stains. So it is good, it helps us as a, a basic screening technique to identify cells that we might want to send off to the lab. But it's not, it's not the absolute best nuclear detail that we can get. And stromal concentrate, er, content is well demonstrated. For Papanicolaou stains, so dry smear, you tend to get uh, drying artifacts. So if you were to take a smear that's already dry, dip it in your Papanicolaou staining, you tend to get some distortion uh, artifacts occurring. Wet smear has really good fixation. Cytoplasmic detail, poorly demonstrated. However, the bonus of this um, is that it's you can use it for clumped samples, for sheeted samples, samples where you might not be able to get clear nuclear detail or nuclear detail if you were to use a Romanowski stain because of all those cytoplasmic stainings in the background. So because Papanicolaou doesn't really stain the cytoplasm, then it tends to be good um, identification for the nuclear content. Nuclear detail excellently demonstrated and stromal content is poorly demonstrated. So just a little recap at the bottom, Romanowski stains are often used when identifying changes in the cytoplasm and the nucleus. Papanicolaou, ideal standard for nucleoli definition. So effects of an ideal stain is to reduce artifacts, to have nuclear, uh, identification of nuclear cytoplasmic ratio, chromatin pattern and color, nuclear appearance or at least identification of the nucleolus, cytoplasmic features and extracellular matrix is the visibility and the color. So for us, this is what we're looking for in choosing an ideal stain when we're looking at cytology. The other stain I didn't mention was new methylene blue. And this is one that you've used or probably have used when you're looking at immature red blood cells, so reticulate, reticulocyte counts. I'll post... Um, I think I've posted a video that somebody else had posted for new methylene blue, adding it to your sample, to your wet sample, in order to use it as a staining technique. So I'll, we can have a look at that. The other option as well is to have a dried sample, and you just simply drop new methylene blue on and a cover slip, and you can look at your sample right away. So you can have a dry, non-fixed sample, i.e. it hasn't gone through a chemical chemical fixative, and you just drop some new methylene blue um, stain onto your sample and you can start looking at it right away. New, meth new methylene blue is ideal when you're trying to look for RNA or DNA changes, such as in the reticulocytes, but also certain cells show up really well with new methylene blue, like mast cells, mast cell tumors. So if it's suspected that an animal has a mast cell tumor and you've made numerous slides, definitely try to stain at least one of those with new methylene blue to get ideal highlighting of the, the blue granules.